Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate. The good news is I'm out of the cast and in a removal splint, and I also just went to the dentist, so please make fun of how my mouth looks and sounds in the comments. All right, enough about my health problems. Let's get into this week's dev news. First up, uh, just another reminder that registration for Microsoft Build is now open. Build is our big developer conference, and this year it'll be in Seattle from May 7th through 9th. I'll be there, all your Channel 9 favorites will be there, so we want you to be there. Like I said last week, if you see me at Build, please say hello. Next up, this actually hit last week, but I missed it, and it's too cool to pass up. Calling all Gophers, the Azure SDK for Go is now generally available to help developers build apps for Azure with Go. The SDK has support for connecting to data sources like Cosmos DB and Azure Storage, deploying Azure resources programmatically, authenticating users, and more. Even better, there is also now an Azure Go Dev Center on our Docs page with lots and lots of resources and SDK quick starts. Part of the Azure SDK for Go deals with Cosmos DB, which is one of my favorite technologies, and it like, blows my mind the more and more I learn about it. And if you're interested in learning about Cosmos DB, join us for one or all of a seven-week Azure Cosmos DB technical training series, which explores the capabilities and potential of Azure Cosmos DB. Whether you're brand new to Azure Cosmos DB or an experienced user, you'll learn You'll leave the series with a better understanding of database technology and have practical skills necessary to get started. The first week of courses kicks off next week, February 27th, so register now. In Xamarin News, the Xamarin team has a great blog post up about how to use Apple's Core ML framework in Azure to build a simple Xamarin iOS app. Core ML can be used in conjunction with Microsoft's custom vision service to generate custom machine learning models. The tutorial is awesome, and what I really love about this is that it shows how Azure and Xamarin can be used with native frameworks on other platforms in great ways. Speaking of tutorials and guides, Raymond Camden has a terrific uh, practical introduction for progressive web apps up on the Telerik blog. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, Microsoft Edge is getting full progressive web app support, and the next version of Windows 10 should support PWAs in the Microsoft Store. This is the second part of Camden's introduction series, and it's a great overview for any developer out there interested in getting started. In Channel 9 news, on the DevOps Lab, Damien is joined by Abel Wang to show one way of tracking and deploying database changes alongside your code. This time, they show off how to use the SQL Server Data Tools, or SSDT, uh, project types in Visual Studio alongside VSTS. It's a great episode, so be sure to check it out in the links below. Also on Channel 9, the latest episode of the IfDev Windows show is up, and this week, Nicola is joined by David Rousset to play around with WebVR and Babylon JS. He shows Nicola how to enable WebVR in just two lines of code, which is rad. One of the topics we've discussed a lot when it comes to AI are some of the potential downsides to the technology. Like, don't get me wrong, AI is cool AF, but it's totally the future, but it's kind of important to be mindful of the potential negative uses of the technology. Like, don't get me wrong, AI is cool and it's totally the future, but it's important to be mindful of the potential negative uses of the technology. The team at OpenAI has co-written a paper with a slew of other researchers and academics that forecasts how malicious actors could misuse AI technology and potential ways we can prevent and mitigate these threats. The paper is the outcome of almost a year of sustained work with OpenAI and their colleagues at the Future of Humanities Institute, the Center for the Study of Existential Risk, the Center for a New American Security, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, and others. If you're interested in AI, and especially how to mitigate some of the potential malicious aspects of AI, I definitely recommend reading the paper. Speaking of non-malicious use cases for AI, the Azure blog details how AI can be used to automatically redact faces in videos. This is important, especially as more law enforcement agencies start wearing body cameras. The problem is that because of important laws like the Freedom of Information Act, when individuals request access to some of the video that these agencies capture, there needs to be a way to redact the faces of the individuals to protect their privacy. And using the Azure Media Analytics, it's possible to redact faces in a video at scale and in the cloud, which is very cool. And now it's time for my pick of the week. Microsoft MVP and all-around security hero Troy Hunt has released Owned Passwords version 2, putting half a billion passwords from a large range of different data breaches that organizations can use to better protect their own systems. 
This is a great feature that's part of a Troy's essential Have I Been Owned database. And I love that Troy is not just helping inform customers when their data has been breached, but also helping other organizations create better password rules and security thanks to these databases. Thank you, Troy. Well, that does it for me, and we will see you next week with a special episode filmed in New York City. And if you like this video and you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that like button on the bottom and subscribe to our channel if you're not already. And if you want to be able to keep up with all the latest and greatest Microsoft developer content, turn on notifications. See you later.